hello, it's me, AMC me, or Ashley, and I'm going to be doing a reaction recap, more likely, for the K-drama The Trunk, which was highly anticipated for me, um, being a huge fan of Gong Yu and Seo Hyu Jin. Um, these two, when I heard that they're going to be starring together in a show, I was like, I don't care what it's about, I'm watching it. Uh, so if you don't know, The Trunk is on Netflix. It came out like a few days ago. It was November 29th of this year, so Black Friday. I was surprised there's only eight episodes. I was like stopping streaming because I was like anticipated that, oh, it's going to be 16 episodes, two episodes a week. I'm going to have to watch, um, edit, and hurry and get stuff out. But all eight episodes are out and it's a mystery romance drama and you can kind of get that if you see the trailer um i'll include that the synopsis is nj who is played by seo hyun jin is a contract marriage provider and for a company called nm the company provides its clients with a spouse for a fixed term one-year contract marriage. NG has finished her fourth contract marriage, which is what starts the beginning of the first episode. And then she finds out who her next contract is. And that's Jion Wong, who's played by Gong Yu. And he's her fifth marriage contract so she's worked at this company for five about to be five years uh gong yu who plays jio wan works as a mu music producer and his life is filled with anxiety and loneliness due to the pain from his past he still badly misses his ex-wife seo yuan who is played by um jong hyun ha and uh, who applied for this spouse providing company NM for him. So yes, the ex-wife is the one who told him to go sign up for this service. Um, Jio Wan meets in Injin, NG from NM and he begins his second marriage with her. They get to know each other and get used to each other as time passes. And then one day, this is like, going into like the first episode a mysterious trunk is recovered from a lake and this leads them into a whirlwind of secrets behind the nm company i will say that's kind of true but you also learn the secrets behind the cast as well all the characters in the show as well this show, I didn't know what to expect. Um, on my drama list, it's not doing very well. From what I've heard, a lot of people are saying it was boring, but I really enjoyed it. Like every episode, I thought it was re really well done. I thought the acting was fantastic. Um, but first, we're going to go over everybody who's in the main cast. So there is Seo Hyun Jin who plays No NG, and then Gong Yu who plays Han Jiong Wan. There is Jung Yoon Ha who plays Lee Seon Yoon who is Jiong Wan's ex-wife. Um, there is On Heo Cho play who is played by Hong Wu Jin and he is Jiong Wan's co-worker um, Yoon Ah played by Ju Min Kyung is Oh Ch uh, Chion Chol's wife and somewhat of a friend to Leo Seo Yoon who is Jiang Wan, Gong Yu's character's ex-wife. Um, there is Kim Cheon Chu, 
who is played by Chow Young Joon, who plays the detective, and Bak Yo Sim, who plays, uh, who's played by Kim Jo Kim Ho Jung. Un Ji Wan plays Lee Sion, and she's actually the CEO of NM, the company that No NG works for. Uh, and then there is Lee Kyung Tak. That is that's his name. Okay, so that's the cast, uh, and then we're gonna get into the recap for the first episode which already starts off kind of melancholy but the first opening scene there's a gunshot and then they show the trunk which is this super expensive Prada trunk that's a limited edition I believe they say there's only three sold and it's submerged into water and then <clears throat> it shows a lake and the trunk washing up on shore. And you get the feeling like <clears throat> this is not going to be good. Uh, it cuts to no and no NG at the hospital. And we see like somebody's passing away. And what you can surmise from that is that it's her first or her fourth husband and her contract is ending because he passed away and uh, he was passing away. And it's so cold blooded, but I mean, I guess she's used to it. I don't know how, if it's only been four marriages, um, but I'll insert a clip of her interaction totally business she hands her business card to the doctor like could you contact his next of kin and they're like aren't you she was like no this was just business or she's like i was and they show her and then she goes to the bathroom and washes her hand and leaves the wedding ring on the sink well what you get from that interaction you can see like she's just a very calm, cool, stoic person who just goes about life business as usual. Uh, they cut to a scene where she's kayaking and she gets a phone call and we see the logo NM and it sends her a text message saying, do you want to proceed to your next marriage? Like, are you ready for your next contract uh, marriage? And then they show her going into the office and speaking to her boss, where she does the paperwork saying it's a divorce, which I thought was weird because I'm like, it's not really a divorce. He passed away. So technically you would be a widow. But further into the show, you get more of what goes on. But she signs this paperwork saying that it's a div uh, divorce confirmation and that her task is complete. And she did her report. And she goes to talk to her boss and he's like, you sure you don't want to take a vacation? She's like, no, I'm ready. Just send me on the next job. And her boss warns her. She's like, hey, this job is not going to be easy. It's not going to be a match made in heaven like all of your other jobs were and then we see she pulls out a tablet and we see a picture of Han Jio Woon who's uh, played by Gong Yu and it cuts to him this man he is down bad like he's in the bathroom stall at the club playing with a bottle of pills and there are people outside of the stall talking shit about him saying hey isn't he a prick that's like basically a pill popper like oh yeah after he got divorced he turned totally turned into a pill head and the guy's like you know some gossip about him tell me and the guy tells them to like shut up uh and after they leave the bathroom he opens the bottle and takes like a handful of pills and i'm like dude <laughs> You, you're definitely not okay. 
and it makes you think like, oh, well, whatever they said is true. And you just see him totally out of it, wandering through the club, not paying attention to anybody, not hearing anything. And if you've been to a club, you know, it's loud as hell. It's loud. It's bright. And he's not looking at any of it. He's just a zombie. And you see him look up at the lights in the club. And all of a sudden, it turns into this chandelier that kind of looks like some kind of alien creature. And he's hypnotized by it. And then all of a sudden, it like crashes on him. And then it just cuts to the next morning. He wakes up in bed. And I'm like, whoa, this dude, he's got issues. Our man's got issues. To add on to that, the first thing he does when he wakes up is call his ex-wife, who doesn't answer. He is going downstairs and his co-workers on the phone with them telling him, hey, you're turning into a pill popper. Everybody's talking about it. You need to calm down. You need to go talk to a therapist. And he's like, man, I can't sleep. I have insomnia. He's, And he's like, just pick a room. Your house is huge. And he is like, that's not the point. And he is like, I already have all these prescriptions. I'm talking to a doctor and it's not helping. And while he's talking to his friend, it looks like he's taking some more pills. But as soon as he gets off the phone with him, he immediately calls his ex-wife again. So you can tell like, dude is like not over his marriage yet, has some kind of detachment, like attachment issues. And then when he looks like he's going back upstairs, you see the chandelier that he was envisioning when he was high as hell and zombified at the club. And he takes the stick and he's like hitting it. Like he's trying to look for something. And you're like, dude, if you don't like the chandelier, get rid of it. And while he's hitting it, he gets a phone call from his wife, ex-wife. And she, and he says, can you get rid of the chandelier? And she's like, why? It's a work of art. She's like, fine, I'll get rid of it. But I know somebody in France that can make one that'll be just as great as that one. And you're like, dude, if you hate it, why can't you get rid of it? Why? I mean, obviously he's using it as an excuse to talk to her. And I'm just like, ah, he's, he's, there's a lot going on with this dude. And he pulls out to go to work and you see and on the street, you see no NG walking to his house. Like right as he pulls off, she pulls up, she comes walking up with her trunk, the same trunk we seen in the opening credits that was submerged in water. Um, and she has keys to his house. She just walks in. She also looks up at the chandelier and at this big ass mansion. And she's just like scoping out the scene. By the way, this house is gorgeous, but not very welcoming there's like no homey feeling about it it's gorgeous but i wouldn't want to live there but as soon as she gets in the house she looks around she starts to strip right there and like the foyer she strips down walks upstairs naked and then goes to take a shower and i'm like oh okay girl but she don't give a fuck. And I was like, but what if he was there? What were you going to do? But I feel like she pulled in. She came purposely after he was leaving. But after she gets uh, done showering, she looks through the house and she sees a wedding ring and she puts it on. And then it cuts to the uh, male lead going into work and he works at a music studio and it looks like it's going through some kind of remodel and right as he gets out of the parking garage the police come up to him and they're like hey how are you doing 
and they're going to him to get a drug test. They showed up at his job to make him do a drug test. And he asked them like, hey, why are you harassing me? It's been, I was 17 years old the last time I got in trouble for doing like illicit drugs. And they're like, Ugh. he's like, I was a kid when it happened. And the cops are like, whatever. Somebody got arrested at the club for drugs and they brought your name up. So we just came to see you. And he was like, I haven't done anything since I was a teenager. And the guys, the police officers like, well, basically you're an adult. He was 17, which in Korea, that's like saying you're 16 because 19 is like when they graduate from uh, high school. But they're just being dicks, pretty much. And you kind of feel bad for him after seeing like his whole entrance and how a boy has a lot going on. But right after they he leave, he leaves the bathroom, he goes into the studio and starts wailing on the dude, which I guess is the one who snitched, who got in trouble and then snitched and brought him up but he wasn't doing any drugs he was just taking sleep aids but he beats the shit out of this dude and like two people had to pull him off and he's like passed out at work and his friend the producer um oh hyun chol he tells him hey dude like i know your ex is a bitch but can you get back with her you're terrible and you're spiraling out and everybody is tired of your shit. <laughs> the friend shows and then it cuts to his ex-wife who is talking to Oh Hyun Chol's wife, uh, Yuna. And she's asking her, Lee So Hyun, his wife, ex-wife, oh, how's, the, how's it feel to be married to a younger guy? And she just married, she just married some young hot guy and the girl's asking her like, how is it? How's your life? How's your love life? How's the marriage? And this is where I say, I don't really think this girl's her friend and they're there or they're not that close uh, because she asks her, why did you even get divorced in the first place? And she was like, could you be married to the, to a husk of a man? And she's like, don't even worry about it. He's about to get married too. And that girl's like, what? And runs to go tell her husband. She just seems like a gossip. <laughs> but um, in the middle of her running to go tell her husband, uh, Jeon Woon overhears her talking shit about him saying, is he only going to get married because she got married and he's jealous? But he just ignores her. He doesn't even acknowledge her and just walks out. And it cuts to him sitting at a restaurant. And he you can tell he's like excited. And guess who he's meeting? His ex-wife. Seo <sighs> Yeon. 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 And he's like super excited. He's like sits up when he sees her coming and she looks over it and she comes to sit down and she's like yeah <sighs> we do i guess they do this like every week they meet up which is strange because what we've heard she's married and she's like we don't do it more when he asks why don't we do it more She's like, it's because I'm married. <laughs> and while she's ordering, she's like looking at the menu and she puts her hand down on the table and he sees it and takes it as an invitation to like try and touch her hand. And as soon as he his fingers start to get close, she picks her hand up. Ooh, I'm sorry. She picks her hand up, which I kind of thought was strange and I was like, is she like leading him on? That's very weird. Uh, he like takes his hand back and he balls it into a fist and it kind of like shakes. And he pulls a gift out of his jacket pocket. 
and it's for her and it's jewelry. And it's like, bro, what are you doing? What are you doing? She is your ex-wife and she's married. Get that through your head. She's not interested in you. And she's like, you'll be fine. You're getting married. It's just going to be for a year. Do this. Think of it as an arranged marriage. And then afterwards, we can get back together. And he's telling her, like, why I don't want to do this. He's known her since they were in kindergarten. Kindergarten. Uh, and um, she's like, it's because, and he tells her he's never been apart from her. And she's like, well, maybe you should try it. Try it for a year. And then we'll circle back, right? And then we'll get Mary married. And he's not down for it at all. And she tells him, do you think this is hard for you? Do you know what I went through? And we they cut to a picture of her in a hospital stretcher with like a neck brace on. And there's blood everywhere. Uh, and she gets a phone call and it's her husband calling her. And she's like, so are we done here? After she gets off the phone because my husband's coming to pick me up and she leaves. Didn't even get their food. Nothing. She gets up and just leaves him sitting there. And I'm like, ooh, she do not like you, bro. Like, stop trying. And you could see him. He's like sitting there and he's like staring at her leaving. And they show her car pulling up to her house. And guess who's fucking following her? If you're saying Gio Wan, you're correct. He followed them home. He's like around the corner watching them be all lovey-dovey with each other and walking inside. And he has the nerve to pull up behind their car after they go in the house and look in their car. And he's seen in the back seat that the gift box that he gave her or the gift is sitting in the back seat. So we kind of know he's not right, right? He goes back to his car, goes in the trunk, and pulls out a bottle. And proceeds to walk back to their car and smash out the window. The back passenger driver's side window. And as soon as he gets done, <laughs> as soon as he gets done, this, this is how you know he's not in his right mind. The cops catch him. Like, he didn't even get to the box to see... If it was even the gift he gave her or not, which I mean, I could see why he would think it was the gift he gave her. But I was like, dude, you just got harassed by the police this morning and now you're sitting at the police station. But I forgot to tell you, before he went to go get the bottle to bust the window out, he called her multiple times and she's in the house having a little freak Nick session with her husband. While he's standing outside being obsessive, couldn't be me. I'm going to need him to get it together. Our boy is down bad. Um, so while he's sitting in the police station and they're like trying to question him and give his name, he's not giving them anything. Um, no G or NG walks into the police station and th stops right next to him. And the police are like, can I help you? She's like, yes, I'm here to pick up my husband. And she gives his name. And the other cop that um, was there, they were trying to contact the ex-wife, C.O. Yeon, to let her know, like, hey, somebody broke into your car. Because they were trying to say he was trying to steal when his car is way more expensive than the car in front of him, he's driving a Ferrari and they just have like, I think it's a Genesis SUV. Um, and the other police officer gets a call back from the ex-wife and she's like, oh yeah, she lost her keys. She told him to do it. And when the other cop who's questioning hears that, he's like, oh, are you serious? Uh, no G or NG I keep saying no NG's like so can we leave now 
and she takes uh, uh, Gio Wan to leave and he tries to have an attitude. He's like, am I supposed to thank you or something? He is like, well, I don't have my keys because they took me as soon as they seen me break the window. And he's like, I'll take a taxi. And she's like, hmm, fine. He walks away and she pulls out a set of keys. And at the beginning, when he left for work, we seen he has this <laughs> key holder with six or seven different keys in it. And she's holding one of the keys. So they show him standing by the street trying to catch a cab and she drives up in his car and she's like get in and he's like is this my car and he gets in and they have an uncomfortable ride back home where he tries to ask her like do you enjoy your job why do you do this job and he's being like kind of condescending and it's like excuse me sir you signed up for this service okay don't try to get an attitude with me because your life is shit, okay? I hope you don't think you're better than me. Uh, and then they cut to the f current time. Well, I think it's it's five year, five months. There's a boat docked with drops of blood that's been found along with the trunk that we talked about at the beginning. And the police are like trying to figure out what the heck is going on. They found the trunk, they found the boat with blood in it, but they don't have any kind of evidence. You know how they have cameras everywhere in Korea? All, all the cameras are cut, so they have nothing and the police officer finds out that, like I said earlier, this is a designer trunk, 50 million won, limited rare edition. Only three of them were sold in Korea. And the one cop is like, that's fine. If it's that rare, that makes it easier for us to find somebody. Get the serial number, take it to uh, who would sell it and ask them, hey, who who bought this trunk? Who does it own to? Or who does it belong to? When they get back home, uh, NG lets Jiang Wan know, like, hey, I made dinner because I figure you might not have eaten. But the first thing he does when he come in is goes to the fridge and gets a beer. She tells him, hey, I took the room upstairs. If you want me to move somewhere else, that's fine. And he is like, do you think this is a real marriage? being condescending again and being an ass and she's like i'm just here to do my job and um he was like do you can you do you have to live here if you want to have an apartment somewhere or a house just let me know i can go get it for you did i mention this man's loaded he lives in a mansion so obviously right uh, um she goes up to bed after he's like, fine, we can do this arrangement. And then he goes to shower. And he's just contemplating his life, I hope. He should be. But it cuts to a scene when he's going to, um, where he's meeting with the CEO of NM, the company that NG works for. And she's like, yeah, your ex-wife referred you to us. And he's like, yeah, why do you have this company? Are you like, because you're, because marriage is so low, you can't find people to get married. She gives him a good rebuttal and he can't really say anything, but he agrees to the marriage. Um, and then while he's laying in bed, he wakes up because he has a nightmare of some woman in his kitchen and she's just crouched in front of the fridge with all these food items in front of her. And she's just stuffing her face. And you're like, what the fuck is going on? And you can tell like he's uneasy. And she walks past him. And all of a sudden it zooms out. It shows a man sleeping. And it shows the woman again, but she has a knife. And she goes over to the man like she's about to stab him but 
Gio Wan stops her and he's like, mom, I understand, but don't do this. And he wakes up. So we're like, okay, this is, this is where all of this darkness was probably coming from. And you kind of understand like something else must have happened that triggered this episode that he's in right now besides the part where the cops were like talking to him saying well you got in trouble when you were younger so you're probably thinking like okay something happened when he was a teenager and then something happened recently for him to spiral again is it that's what it seems like he's just spiraling and doesn't know what to do other than taking pills and that's not gonna help and the following day, we see NG made breakfast and she made fish because she found out that's what he likes. And him, again, being a dick is like, you don't have to do that. I don't cook breakfast. And she was like, well, I cooked fish. And he's like, humor me, sit down and have some. And uh, she put some fish on his rice. And he is like, I'm not really in the mood right now. And then he gets up and leaves and she tastes it. She's like, hmm, he missed out. Like, this was good. Oh, well, bye, Dick. And I just love how nothing that he does really bothers her. She's just like, huh, whatever. <laughs> I know this wasn't going to be easy. And while he's at work, NG goes to some old apartment building and you see her go into this apartment and you're like, oh, this must be where she really lives. And she goes and she just sits down on the floor and you're like, um, girly, I thought he was the only one with issues. What's going on with you? And she just cleans up. She gets up, she cleans up and you see a wedding picture and the people in the photo, it's folded, so you can't see their faces, but you can see from the shoulders down that it's a man and a woman, and you assume that she's the woman, and a neighbor shows up, and she goes to check on her, and she's like, hey, are you just watching this place for him? Did you kill him? Like, what's up with this? Why are you still living here? Why haven't you like sold this place? Why are you still taking care of his things? And she just tells her like, yeah, I killed him. Okay. To like get her to shut up. And the lady's like, girl, I know you're lying. I just need you to get over him because he's a piece of shit. How could he just leave up and leave like that and leave you here? And while she's finishing up and about to leave, she gets a call from her friend who tells her, um, he's still, he's out. I thought he was supposed to be there longer. And, and G's like, who are you talking about? And her friend's like, um, te song. And we come to find out that this person played by Kim Dong Wan was in a mental institution because he was stalking NG and he's been released and she goes the one time in the whole show that I noticed into the trunk and there's a taser in there and you're thinking like oh shit this dude's dangerous um and her uh but when she was talking to her friend her friend seen him and she's keeping an eye on him but a bus went by and this dude disappeared I'm like, great. <laughs> now he's on the, he's roaming around and we have no clue where he is. And then it shows uh, Gio Wan taking an elevator. And you see that, again, he has more psychological issues. He can't, something about elevators bothers him. And he's kind of like having a panic attack and he's try, like, trying to calm himself down. And when he gets off, we see that he went to his ex-wife's office, Seo Yeon. And he went there to go talk to her to say, hey, um, I busted the window out. Um, thanks for telling the cops that it 
it wasn't anything and covering for me. And she turns around and looks at him and she tucks her hair behind her ear. And she's like trying to show them to him. And he's like, oh, shit, I'm embarrassed. I can't believe I did that. She was like, I told you they were pretty. I just left the box in the car. And I was like, did you did you leave the box in the car? Did you do it on purpose? And I'm like, did you do this on purpose? Because you knew he was going to follow you. There's like something about her that just doesn't sit right with me. It's like she enjoys him pining for her. While she has somebody that she's actively married to and has a relationship with. But she just likes all the attention. And I'm like, that's kind of disgusting something's wrong with you too <laughs> obviously something's wrong with you but she goes with him on the elevator back down to the garage for them to leave together and she sees him panicking and she soothes him which is really great but when they get to the bottom floor she says the most discur disturbing disgusting thing that you could say to somebody who you know is having who's like depressed, you know, and I can't believe it. I'll insert, uh, I'll insert the scene because when I seen that, I was like, yeah, I knew something was wrong with her. It's confirmed now that there's really something wrong with this chick. But after she says that, he goes home and he just sits in his car in the garage and and she comes down and she like she calls him and she's like, get out of the car, come inside. And he looks up and he sees her standing there looking at him and he finally comes inside and they go inside and then they go down, they sit and have dinner and he's like, so what is your job? you're a maid a housekeeper and I get to have sex with you and he tries to like make her uncomfortable and try to like brush her face and it doesn't work she looks up at him and she's like yeah if we come to an agreement and he like stops and he's like I'm actually shy <laughs> I don't I don't have a, like, he wasn't going to do anything to her. He, like, keeps asking her all these questions, and she's like, check the manual. Read your manual. And after he does that, he's like, thanks for dinner. He's like, oh, wait, do I say that to you? And he's like, mm, maybe I should check the manual. And then he goes to bed. She finishes eating, and then she... um goes to watch the soccer game and Gio Wan sitting in bed he can't sleep but he hears the tv and he goes to investigate what it is and he finds her sitting on the couch enjoying herself watching watching the soccer game and he gets upset he's like you can put tvs in your room I don't care how many but why would you do this to somebody who's an insomniac and she's like hmm, I don't know have you tried sitting down and watching nonsense because he doesn't like sports and he was like no and she's like well she gets up she's like well I'll go get you a beer so she goes downstairs and he follows her but the light from the chandelier like blinds him and he doesn't look at it it, like it pains him to look at it and she comes with the beer while he's coming down and she throws it to him and he catches it and she was like I don't know why you're trying to put on airs she's like you don't have to impress me in any kind of way just be yourself 
and he takes the beer and chucks it at the chandelier. And a couple of the pieces fall off. And when he goes to go pick them up, parts of the chandelier start to fall down on him. And NG uses her, her body to block it. And you see him like looking up at her like she's a savior. And then he looks at her arm and there's a cut and blood just starts gushing out. And that's how the episode ends. I was like, oh my gosh, what the heck? So my thoughts on the first episode, Gio Wan, I understand his struggle, but I'm gonna need him to quit being a dick to NG because she's just there to do her job. You're the one who decided to do this because Seo Yeon, his ex-wife, asked you to. You didn't have to do it. But because he's so desperate to be back with her or get back together with her, he's doing it. If you're going to do it, do it correctly at least. Um, Leo, uh, Lee Seo Yeon, his ex-wife, I don't like her. After that elevator scene, it cemented it to me. I don't like her. Um, I kind of felt bad for her at the beginning. So I'm like, damn, she can't shake this dude. He's like obsessed with her. She can't get away. But it seems like she's goading him on. And then you goad him on and then tell him you want him to die. I'm like, okay, bitch. Uh, and she, she seems like she's a fractured person, but I still like her. Um, she's like stoic, but in a cool way. She's not like mean to people. She's just like to the fact, to the point. And you can see like there's more there to her than what she shows. Um, but so far, so good. I really enjoyed it. Uh, thank you so much for listening. If you liked uh, the video, please give a like. Um, if you've been watching the trunk or you did watch the trunk, let me know what you thought about it. I would love to chat about it. And if you like my videos, which there'll be more that pop up, think about subscribing and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.